I would like to, to talk more about jazz, okay. about improvisation, about your poetry, but let me quote maybe to what you have said before from the fur foreword of uh, Ornate with Smoke. You wrote, I perceive my ancestors invented and reinvented many languages in order to spread literacy among embattled souls. Negro spirituals, folk tales, sermons, blues, jazz, gospel, soul, doo-wop and rap. Uh, but to, to connect to, to jazz, uh, allow me to, to read a few lines of one of your great uh, poems. In the beginning was nothing, and God made some thing out of no thing. A bird riff B, pop out of nothing. Fred say, I carry round a library of nothing. I read every word every day. I write my name in acts depictions. That's from one of my favorite poems you wrote, number eight in Velvet Bebop. And we should explain to, to listeners less familiar with jazz that Bird is, of course, Charlie Parker. Reed is the vibrating reed of woodwind instruments. And the axe is the saxophone. Mm -hmm. And Fred, I would like to talk about some important musicians who have been particularly dear to you. When we start with jazz, then it seems remarkable to me that some of the greatest Chicago musicians have never really received the acclaim and the recognition they deserve way beyond the state lines. I think in particular about Von Freeman and Fred Anderson. two true great giants of the tenor saxophone. Musicians who are at the cutting edge, they cannot be popular. That's number one. And number two, uh, when I was trying to think about it, the, 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 the bebop over the last 70 years, the bebop inventions, uh, many of those musicians had showcases in New York. Mm -hmm. and, and, and not only had showcases, but it meant something to be in a music organization with Theo Lonis Monk, Art Blakely, Miles Davis, and be recorded by Blue Note. Mm -hmm. so, see, 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 if you, if you, see, see, that's why Fred, see, see, Fred didn't play with Miles Davis. Mm -hmm. I mean, he plays with Miles Davis. He, he's right there with uh, Sonny Rollins or some of these other, other people. He played on 75th Street. He told me in the early 1980s that he had been playing 48 years every week on the south side of Chicago. At the Velvet Lounge. No, no, no. no. He, Not yet. No, he played the uh, Enterprise Lounge and, mm -hmm. and uh, what is it, uh, and New Apartment Lounge. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the uh, genre of bebop. Uh, you're talking about Charlie Fox. Uh, Fred Anderson, I mean, I mean, Von Freeman is the bebopper. He mm -hmm. acts like a bebopper. He's generalizing. He's improvising. Fred Anderson uh, is more of a post bop. What am I talking about? I'm saying somewhere uh, between the death of Charlie Parker, I suppose, and the decline 
uh, people like Coltrane, uh, uh, Miles Davis, uh, beginning with a man uh, by the name of Ornette Coleman, who was a mm -hmm. brilliant alto saxophonist. They kept experimenting. They, 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 they kept experimenting. Uh, sometimes it's tonal. Uh, it might get to something called free, free jazz. And uh, 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 there was a man, very brilliant, his name was Sun Ra, uh, 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 who was in Chicago. And somewhere between 65 and 70, the group, the AACM, Joseph Jarman, uh, what name, Roscoe Mitchell, people like that uh, began uh, <clears throat> what they are doing is an experimentation almost like bebop. Mm -hmm. but, but, but you have to look at it, uh, Charlie Parker is a, how, how do I want to say that? He was a rare individual. Not that the people, in other words, I'm told by Fred Anderson uh, uh, that ever since they had uh, big band jazz or swing, there had been a lot of uh, melodic uh, musicians on, on melodic instruments who felt they needed more, ex more room to expand. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know how to do it. And what Fred, what, what Fred said, they looked up one day and Charlie Parker was playing exactly what, because he was playing with the great Dizzy Gillespie. Uh, he also had Max Roach. I mean, I mean, brilliant drummers, big yes, yeah. bass players. Uh, 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 and so when you're looking at the AECM, uh, 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 I tell you what Fred Anderson said. I I would go see him uh, Thursday night. The, the Velvet Lounge was a performance space, so that many of these experimental musicians would go there and play. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't want to ask musicians what. Well, why are you living? But I caught Fred one day and he was saying to me that keeping that place open was taking up all of his time. He thought it was, that was his mission to keep it open mm -hmm. so that the musician could come in. He, he ran the place uh, as if uh, He owned the ability to collect donations at the door, but the musicians actually controlled and owned the performance space. And he, he was 75 years old, and uh, he said, you know, uh, keeping this place up, making sure that the water is running, the heat is on, he said, it's taking up all my time. And he said, you know, when I was gigging, that is, when I was playing a lot of jobs, mm -hmm. he said, you know, I used to practice four and five hours a day. He said, now, you know, uh, uh, keeping this place open is uh, encroaching on my time. And I said, well, Fred, well, how many hours do you practice a day? He said, I can't do but two or three. Well, I, th I said, well then, what, the, what in the world are you trying to do as a musician? He said, man, I'm trying to know my horn. Mm -hmm. this is, this, that's, that's the essence of, of, of a lot. He, try, he was trying to know his horn, and if you watch him play a year, you might go in there some night and there would be two different bass players playing with him. Sometimes it would be two drummers. 
And he was, I was trying to say, I said, what are you trying to do? He said that there are different fields of the horn that you can hear with two bass mm -hmm. flails, you know. He, he was explaining it that way. And, uh, and a lot of brilliant musicians and music was played, but until you, uh, what is it? Rap music had vibes on that magazine. I mean, there is no magazine to adequately explain to the, 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 to the public what's going on. And the major newspaper, uh, maybe Howard Reich is a different, the major newspapers in Chicago cover what, what happened at the Jazz Showcase. Mm -hmm. And what happened at the Jazz Showcase is brilliant music, but to me, you, you, you know, I know what Blue Note Records is. Look like the classic recordings of someone like uh, Howlin' Wolf, or, I mean, no, 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 uh, Sonny Rollins, or the, uh, Miles Davis. There was a certain genre of jazz that I, I was hearing there. And none of the experimental music, music mm -hmm. will be playing now. Mm -hmm. Well, Joe Siegel was not really for, in, uh, for experimental music. I remember when, uh, um, when he had some, uh, for example, uh, Tyler, pianist. He rented another piano to, to, save, uh, to save his own there. Uh, that was not, not his cup, uh, cup of tea. But talking about Bird, Von, Fred, Jazz, this is all about improvisation, creating, sharing, yeah. and celebrating the moment. Classical music is written, jazz is recorded, but jazz has to be experienced best in the moment of creation in the shared space. Yeah. You translate this improvisation, this moment, this rhythm into words. And I think that they have to be spoken aloud to unveil the essence of improvisation you have captured and that you are sharing the rhythm. Uh Two uh, writers, I mean, uh, the writer, uh, 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 let me, the first time saying bebop was so great until there was a whole literary movement uh, developed, uh, Ginsburg, Jack Curry Act, they were called beats, mm -hmm. that they were enamored with. Uh, the artistry and the dedication of people like Charlie Parker. Uh, Charlie Parker apprenticed himself to the music. Uh, Theolonius Monk apprenticed, apprenticed himself to the music. You, you know, and, 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 and what, what, what happened, uh, there, was a, there was a movement called the Beat Movement that emerged uh, after World War II. The, they began to do public performances, sometimes with, with, with musicians. Maybe Kuriak, who is a fiction writer, in uh, Ginsburg, maybe, maybe they're the biggest name, maybe a man by the name of William Burroughs. Mm. Uh, Ferlinghetti. And yeah, Ferlinghetti. Now, the, the interesting thing, uh, that happened, uh, you had this precocious, literate kid. Uh, dad was a postal, uh, maybe a supervisor in the post office. Uh, uh, he, uh, mother was also educated. Uh, 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 the top, uh, I mean, the top African-American college, uh, black, historical black college 
as Howard University in Washington, D.C. It had, the federal government funded it. Uh, uh, the people who were matriculated there was the great Arthur Davis, uh, maybe Ruby D. But the biggest name that come out of there was Toni Morrison. Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. She was there. Uh, Amiri Baraka, that's, that, that is a top university. Oh, what's her name? Kamala Harris, maybe. Was from Harvard University. I'm, 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 but but uh, very interesting. When uh, Amira Baraka was at Howard University, there was a brilliant African American poet named Sterling Brown. Came from a very prominent family. Maybe his father was a minister. Uh, 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 graduated from the top high school. Uh, uh, went to maybe Williams College as an undergraduate. And then uh, I want to think he got a master's degree in ages from Howard, from Howard. His name was Sterling Brown. The other aspect of uh, um, Sterling Brown, Sterling Brown was born somewhere around 1900. And he would have died in the late 80s. Uh, he was with Alan Lomax. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. Alan Lomax uh, was going to the South to... Uh, collecting what they call folk music. And I, I, and I think that Sterling Brown might have been with him when he recorded Muddy Waters. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he was someone who really knew. Uh, and he developed a course of uh, jazz and blues where he would play recordings and Howard University refused to let him teach it. Now we don't want that stuff taught here. <laughs> and so what, so what uh, 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 Sterling Brown did, he went in to, to one of the men dormitories and every week he would teach that class, uh, the musical examples. And two of the people at Howard at that time, uh, one was Leroy Jones, born in 1934, and the other one was a man by the name of A.B. Spellman, maybe he was born around 1935. The interesting thing is they were I would suspect between 1960 and about 1990, they were the African Americans or the Americans who produced the two most important books on black music. Uh, Leroy Jones' book was called Blues People, mm -hmm. and A.B. Spellman's book was called Four Lives in the Bebop Business. But, 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 but what, what Leroy Jones was in the beat movement. Uh, his wife was Jewish and all these people would be in his house and he had a tremendous ear. Uh, uh, you can hear it in two books. One, one of them is called Preface to a 20 Volume Suicide Note and the other one is called The Dead Lecturer. It is a, it's a, it was a, it was a combination of things. It's a surprising use of imagery and metaphor, and it's absolute control of the line, of the rhythm of the book. Everyone knows about the Civil Rights, the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. That's 1965. But somewhere between 65 and about 1970, uh, two things happened. More, a large numbers of African Americans uh, were admitted 
to the most prestigious colleges and universities in this land. That's one. The second uh, uh, development is that after the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, uh, uh, there's a concentrated attempt on, on the part of black intellectuals is to get blacks quote unquote power and that it resulted uh, in the election of Richard Hatcher, mayor of Gary, maybe Carl Stokes, the mayor of Cleveland, and maybe Gibson, mayor of Newark, New Jersey. That's one thing. Two other things happened. The other thing that happened is that African Americans on these uh, all white campuses felt that curriculum in the re environment was not conducive uh, 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 to their learning. And they made a number of demands. But the most important demand that they made uh, might, well, maybe, maybe some of this should be, well, how, how do I don't want to explain it? It, 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 it's complex. They, the, what they said, they had problems with the curriculum. Mm -hmm. so, so, so it's not just the books that were being taught. They actually had problems with uh, what a lot of uh, uh, what a lot of prominent scholars who were not African Americans had said about the African American experience. They, 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 they had problems with that, and so what they demanded, uh, uh, and maybe the most. Notable examples would have taken place at Northwestern University and Cornell University. They demanded uh, that you set up some academic unit where the African American experience uh, could be incorporated into the curriculum and that you recruit and, 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 and how more than a token number of African American faculty, or they demand the establishment of, of, of African American studies. See, that happened on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, 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 it, it, it relates uh, uh, to the African American community and uh, what they perceived had happened to the African American mentality as a result of segregation and slavery. Uh, you have to recall that uh, uh, one of the briefs, I suppose, uh, uh, when they were uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, that's legal. But that, uh, there was a brilliant uh, social psychologist, Kenneth Clark, and his wife had done what the so-called doll studies with black children. And what, what the studies essentially showed uh, that if you, if you ask the child, uh, show me the pretty doll, right? They would say, they pick a white doll. Mm -hmm. Show me the ugly doll, they pick a black doll. Show me the doll that looked like me. They'll pick a white doll. And so there were, uh, I kind of want to say this, uh, somewhere around 1903, uh, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois in a book called The Souls of Black People, who says that African Americans suffer from a double consciousness. That, that, that he, I don't want to uh, 
that we come up uh, and are forced to look at the eyes of the other that did not respect us. And see, that's why the black consciousness, well, how do you change that? And so some writers began to say that you needed a literature that ex expressed that, and you get the rise of poets like Nicky Giovanni, Sonia Sanchez, Don Lee, and you began to get a lot of this address. Uh, you know, I don't know what critical race theory is. I'm too dumb, you know, I mean, I, I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't know that's about it. What, what they were trying to address is why is it that these black kids choosing a white doll? That, 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 means, that, I mean, that was their, that was their intent. That, that was their intent, and well, they have the, there, were, there, were other, there were other studies. Uh, the reality of the world, uh, and I won't say this in terms of race. I mean, I don't look at the the world that way. But over the last uh, uh, maybe uh, since the British defeated the uh, Spanish Armada, right? Uh, you, you, you know, I'm not an expert on the war. It looked like Western nations, right, have controlled this planet. See, I don't know what, you know, I don't know what you call that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't have a word for it. But, but, but it's not that. That whatever was European, I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, they took that to South Africa, and they told the Africans, uh, uh, you can't have this land anymore. You know, they brought that to uh, 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 North Dakota, and they told us, Sue, you can't have the land anymore. I mean, I, I don't know what you call that, you, 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 you know, but I think, that, I, th I think that's true. But, 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 but more importantly, uh, when they set up the United Nations, and you, you, you know, and I don't know how to, to respond to some of this. I'm an American, you know, you know what I mean? But, but, but the reality of it is uh, you have India, China, and there are billion Muslim people, and uh, uh, I'm going to have to look at it again. I think that the only country in the United Nations that has a, a permanent veto that's, that's not European might be China. I think it is. You know, you know how, I mean, how does that, you know, I'm trying to make sense out of that, you know. How can you veto what? And, 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 and see, see, and, I, you, 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 let, me, let me say this. I think it would be a, a real tragedy uh, 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 to teach American history uh, and not say that the people who came from Europe expropriated the land away from Native Americans. I think that's true. They didn't own this land. They didn't own no 13 colonies, you know what I mean? That's just one thing. Did not bring people from Africa, put them in chains. And, you, you know, I don't know how great nations act. I mean, I, you, you, you know, the United States is no different than Rome was you 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 know when you have a, 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 a the thing that struck me uh, about reading Roman history when they were going into places like England, Germany, they were Romans. <laughs> you 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 know I don't know what they were taking their land. You know 
no, no, I'm Roman. I mean, you, you, you can't go to no Roman emperor and say I'm Jewish. No, they tell you to kneel before Caesar, or they kill you or crucify you. I mean, it, you, know, you know, I don't know what's going on in the United States. You, you know, you know, no, 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 I, I, I was in the army. You, 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 you know, you, you, I was a, a military person during Vietnam, and the only thing that I had, you know, I'm not, I'm not Marxist. I, you know, I don't know, but I, but I wanted to know how can these people who don't have nuclear weapons, who are only in Vietnam. Well, I, you, know, you, you know what I'm trying to say, however you teach that, you know, you know, you know I, I mean, I don't know how people teach that. But, but that, was, that was the thing that struck me. That, that was the, 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 the thing that struck me. And uh, it's, it, I suppose it's one of the, it's, it's, how do I want to say that? It's hard. Uh, 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 Convince uh, 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 someone that whatever definition they have of you, that you have no interest in that definition. See, that's why you you right. See, see I said I mean, have no interest. Well, well, yeah, my grandparents was was slaves, but they also were singing Negro spirituals, developing jazz. Developing the ability to go on to the top of a concert hall. When you're a minority, uh, uh, you always get caught up in somebody else's spite. Mm. You, 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 you know, I mean, the only thing I want to do is to vote and be left alone. Yeah, I can qualify for it. Just give me that one. I, mean, I can't be, you know, uh, Caught up, uh, and that's what the, and, and, and that's what the writer tries to do. See, I don't try to, I don't have any solution uh, for America, but I try to know how uh, African Americans have come to be through what they develop. Um, and I think it's, I think it's the song. Uh, one of my students was was, was Billy Branch. Uh, it is, uh, uh, he's an unusual uh, uh, person because I think both of his grandfathers were white. Uh, 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 I know that the woman that he, that raised him, his grandmother, that her father had sent her to the Boston Conservatory of Music. Landowners. Uh, another one of his grandfathers had founded the black fraternity group, the Kappas. Uh, blues uh, is a culture. It is. It, uh, 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 but, but, but blues is synonymous with the average African American that people despise. Blues, uh, uh, when I was coming up, would have represented the people that the rappers became. And the only problem uh, that I hear with rappers, I don't think they don't sing. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, I think they're going to write to say what they say, but they can't sing like mm -hmm. Bill Holiday, you know. And, and, and so you uh, 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 are caught, you know. Uh, Barack Obama, summa cum laude from Harvard Law School. That's as high as you can get, right? Mm -hmm. But that was, you know, he's brilliant, right? <clears throat> but I don't know what I would compare him with W.B. Du Bois. I don't know that. <laughs> you know, you know I, mean? I don't think that Barack would take you know, that man with all these books. He founded the NAACP. He founded the Pan African Congress. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 how I want to say this? Uh, uh, let me put it this way. I don't think that popularity uh, 
if you're an African American, mean anything. Uh, yeah. I came up in an era when, when, when baseball was the American sport. Hmm. And there's no doubt in my mind uh, that, that there have not been three baseball players in the class of Willie Mays. And, you know, but when Hank Aaron broke that record, <laughs> you, 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 you know, he, he hadn't been anywhere. You know what I mean? People haven't been writing about him. I mean, and, and that's, you can't, uh, if white America does not define you as someone, uh, 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 they are under the illusion that whoever they pick might speak for us. Yeah, so you, you, you know, and I suppose that's what you do if you're a writer. You, you know, I never wanted anything except uh, 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 a bottle of cognac when I needed and somewhere to write and not hire people to tell me what to write, you know. Mm. That's, all I've, that's all I've ever wanted. But you have been, you are a writer and a poet, but at the same time, you have also introduced at least two generations of uh, young people to African American history and culture. As you have mentioned, Billy, uh, Billy Branch has been one of them, by the way today one of the great virtuosos of the harp. And uh, when I talked to him last year, he said, well, the blues it does not any longer easily and naturally connect to young African Americans, uh, because to them it recalls the pain and suffering they tried to leave behind. Uh, does African American culture still matter today to young African Americans? Uh, how do I want to express this? I think that the, the institutions which fostered uh, that culture are dying. You know, for, for, for you take Sam Cooke, um, Lou Rawls, uh, The Temptation, mm -hmm. they all could have come out of uh, that African American music form called the quartet, mm -hmm. and quartet singing. So you don't have that. Uh, 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 I don't know how the African American church has changed. Uh, 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 you, you, you know, you're talking about Dion Warwick. You, 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 uh, Rita Franklin. Mm -hmm. So see, I'll, I'll, I mean, I, I, I don't. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. But what if I tell you what has changed? You cannot go on 43rd and King Drive and see Junior Wells or Muddy, Muddy Waters anymore. And the taste and uh, in, in entertainment genres of young African Americans changed. It's just that. When I came to Chicago, I could go see uh, a great gospel singer on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Thursday night, I could go and see a great jazz musician. And Friday night, I can go see a, a blues musician. You don't have the regal theater. See, see that, 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 what I'm that is not there. And so it's not your skin color uh, 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 that gives you knowledge of the importance of blues. It is 
uh, your ability to be institutionalized into that. Mm -hmm. And I think that the institutionalize of young people into that is not an option. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know, I, I, just don't think it's an, I, I just don't think it's an option. See, Billy, I can remember before he was a professional uh, musician, uh, he was going to college, but he would go on the south side or the west side, and, and somebody like left the deers would call him up to play the harmonica after he sat there four hours. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, that, that's how you uh, apprentice, you know. But for him, luckily, uh, uh, the great, great songwriter and band leader, Willie Dixon, mm -hmm. hired him and, uh, 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 and he learned the, the songs and uh, uh, he, he played uh, in the early 70s, he played everywhere. Uh, uh, often he played in places before black people and it looked like I was the only black person there. Yeah, I mean, only person there. So, so you know, he, he survived that. He, he, he became a brilliant. He became as good on the harmonica as anybody that ever played it. Uh, 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 uh. But the education that he got from great musicians that he could go see every night, they don't exist. I mean, I, you, 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 you know, I don't. How do I want to say it? Classical music is not going anywhere because it's in the curriculum mm -hmm. uh, of Europe. Uh, 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 it will be here. Opera will be here. But, 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 but what institution uh, are going to uh, create the conditions where young musicians could learn. And it's just not, see, it's just not recording. I mean, see, see, some people say, well, there are a lot of young people out there playing. No, 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 no. that's not what you're saying. You, you, you look at jazz, uh, 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 the people who are playing uh, coming of age in the 40s would have been born in the early 20s and, and the late teens. But these people had Duke Ellison and all those people to listen to. They mm -hmm. played with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, that's, a, that's a, you know, I don't see how a recording studio is going to teach you all the things uh, that a buddy guy learned by playing with Muddy Waters playing with Howlin' Wolf, of course, and he's, well, what he says, uh, he says that when I played with Howlin' Wolf and I played with Muddy Waters, I never tried to play Buddy Guy. I always tried to do something to make them look good. You don't have those institutions. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no, I, I, think it's, I, th I think it's a, uh, a difficult task for the African-American community uh, 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 is, to, is to set up some kind of institution to preserve uh, the authenticity, not of its culture, but its most important culture. I, 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 think, I think that that, that has to happen. And then it seems that there is a certain segmentation also which has always been there. You wrote in the foreword to Ornit with Smoke, uh, Blues and jazz differ for the poet. The invented language of blues empowers the poet to speak his name and his journey through naming pains, while the invented language of jazz allows the poet to acquire a map of the territory of imaginations that changes and expands. When we go back 30 years, uh, actually in the context of the 700-year celebration of uh, Switzerland, the Swiss consulate had offered a musical gift to the city of Chicago, the Chicago Cantata by George Grunz. 
uniting outstanding musicians of the field of jazz, blues and gospel in the same work, same stage on the Chicago Jazz Festival of 1992. You have written the wonderful libretto for this work. And I remember vividly that initially talking to the board of the Chicago Jazz Festival, there was lots of resistance because they thought impossible to bring these three branches of African American musical expression together on one stage. Too deep they saw the divide, especially between blues and gospel, where they anticipated the gospel grades to refuse to join the concert. So I think there were divides, or was this just a perception by the mostly white folks organizing the Chicago Jazz Festival? Yeah, yeah just one thing, I think, uh, I've given a lot of thought to it. When I use the word literacy, I'm not talking about education. Yeah. I, don't, I think that there's a higher degree of literacy required to, to deal with jazz. Uh, it's far more imaginative. Uh, 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 so so you, it was something that you really have to look at and study. You know, I think that a, a, a great deal of, of blues is like prayer. It can mm -hmm. be a personal expression. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 you know, uh, the, the, that you had. Uh, 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 I always conscious of the fact uh, 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 what I aspire to with language is uh, uh, is at one time, at one sense, the preservation of something that has been uh, developed, uh, Negro spiritual, blues, gospel, and jazz, and finally an attempt to preserve that by creating a line or rhythm where it can exist in another form. Mm -hmm. uh, it's surprising, not surprising, that you gave to blues also a, a, a spiritual connotation, like can be like a prayer, because you wrote, wrote in memory of Willie Kent, the great late Willie Kent, though you dance with ancestors, I still hear your voice resonating in the silence of your absence. If a musician leaves so much behind in the soul of people who have known him, who have listened to him, then it's a truly great master and it's a truly great individual and human being. Yeah, at some point, uh, I followed Vaughn Freeman, Billy Branch, uh, Willie Kent uh, so closely that when it came time for me to write the poem, I really could not say it was something original from me or something that I heard from them. I guess that's how good friendship and inspiration, inspiration works. But allow me to conclude with other moving words you wrote for Duncan Gorney Owen, your grandson. You wrote to him, your heritage is part Shakespeare, part poets without names, singing survival in a strange land. That's on one hand, it's very personal for your grandson. I think you could have almost written this also for Barack Obama, 
when he became uh, president. It's a, it's a strong statement which arches this uh, good part, the history of African Americans of the 20th uh, century. Thinking, thinking your grandson, what are your wishes for the America you would like him to grow in with regards to the race, with regards to his heritage? Yeah. Um, the thing uh, that I wish uh, for every American, including my grandson, is the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, to nourish and develop your individuality and have uh, the discipline and fortitude uh, to develop the techniques that will allow you to achieve whether you're a musician, an actor, businessman, a businesswoman. Have that opportunity uh, for education to do all of these things without being persecuted. That's what I wish for every American. Wonderful. Sterling, thank you so much. Thank you for talking to me, for talking to our audience, for joining us. And let me add, happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.